Well, here we are um, going live and eight. Well, we're already going live. Here we go. Okay, this is great. Uh, hi, Jeanette. Hi, Ina. Nice to see you. Um, I'm kind of a little bit excited about today because um, I'm in a completely new location with a new internet service. And I'm hoping that the technology will actually work this time. I've tested it a little, and so far it seems so good. Uh, but um, we'll find out. Uh, hi, Angelica. It's nice to see you. Uh, and today's program um, uh, is kind of a, a fun one because, you know, really, I don't know what I'm going to paint. So, like, I want it to be really... Um, uh, I wanted to do this and just be spontaneous uh, with this so that you, uh, well, maybe you're in the same situation. You know, you sit down and you look at a blank canvas and that's what I have. I have a blank board here and I really don't know what I'm going to paint. I don't have a clue. Um, I'm going to put some paint on uh, the canvas and it's going to evolve. It could be a landscape. It could be a still life, it could be a portrait, or maybe not a portrait, but a painting of a person. Um, and so I'm going to let the, the, the paint just speak to me. Nice to see you, Anne. Uh, Jerry, it's great to see you guys. Uh, thanks for showing up. Hopefully you can hear me okay. Um, please let me know if the sound kicks out or something like that happens. Again, I'm working with a new internet service. So it seems like it's more stable in my tests. So I'm hoping this will be better. Hi, Andrew, nice to see you. Um, so, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, we look at other artists' works and we get inspired and we, we think, well, I want to do this or I want to do that because I've never tried that before. And that person did such a great job of that. I wonder if I can do that. And the problem with that is that, you know, we end up comparing ourselves to uh, other artists. Uh, and there's really nothing wrong with that, except that in the end, uh, the artist that I hope you want to be is you. Um, and what are you? You know, who are you as an artist? Now, some of us are, of course, influenced by scenery or influenced by, you know, portraits or people. And um, so we all kind of lean towards a certain direction. We'll go into, you know, a gallery and maybe be impressed by the colors or maybe the mood or some such thing. Um, but when you start without any reference at all, like you don't have anything in your mind, and I've really tried to clear my mind, um, uh, then it's kind of fun just to see where that goes. Now, it may, uh, may end up looking like a pile of crap. Like really, it may just be awful. I, I have no idea how this is gonna go. Um, I, I, I'm trying not to picture something in my mind. So. Uh, there's a friend, you know, who's gone now, uh, who's pa he's passed away, but his name is Brian Lee. And I met him in Vienna, uh, originally from Liverpool. And um, a really funny guy. Uh, you know, I hung out with him for a bit. He was very generous with me, let me use his studio when I didn't have one when we were first in Vienna. And um, uh, when he went away on vacation, he just gave me the keys and said, you know, go and paint. So... Um, one of the things that Brian would do, and I, I found it fascinating really, because a, a lot of his work was, I would call it abstract. Um, in some ways it, it was a little bit figurative also because he would start with an abstract image. Um, and it was just random. So, so this is something you can try if you want to. Uh, you just take wet paint, put it over top of your canvas or you know onto a board or whatever. And then just take some plastic bags or plastic of some kind and put them on top of the wet paint and pull the plastic off again. And it'll leave all kinds of textures. I'm not going to do that today. I'm, I'm actually going to just try doing something with brushwork. Um, but when you do that, um, it leaves uh, impressions. It leaves marks and, and shapes and, and different values. And he would, after he's, he'd done this, he would actually uh, sit and look at it, sometimes for hours and, in fact, even sometimes for days. Now, when I say that, he may have two or three of them on the go. Uh, so 
you know, it wasn't like he was just kind of sitting around doing nothing. Um, but he would, you know, create some kind of imagery. It's just paint, just paint on the canvas and, and look at it to see if he could see something in it. And very often he would see figures, for example, uh, or faces. And, and he would get up and he would just sort of accent a few areas, you know, put a few dark areas in, a few lighter areas, and try and pull the image uh, out of the, the background. And this was a fascinating thing to see because uh, his images were very beautiful. Uh, if you were to, if you wanted to look him up, you can go to something uh, to a, a site called uh, Red Rose Gallery. I believe it's still online, and his name is Brian Lee L E E. Um, and I learned a lot by watching this because you know it really is a, an intuitive process, uh, and it was an intuitive process that that he was using. And he created many, many paintings this way and beautiful colors, beautiful abstract uh, feel to his work. And yet there were still some figurative elements in, in his work. So um, again, I don't want to, uh, I'm, I'm not supposing anything. Um, in my intro uh, on Facebook, I actually showed a face. Uh, maybe I'll end up painting that, I don't know. Um, but I'm gonna put some marks on uh, the, the, the canvas and let's just go from there. Now, as far as paints are, are concerned, I'm using um, Rublev. I've got a, uh, I've, I haven't pre-mixed colors. I've got like a Cypress Umber Dark. Um, I'll probably use that as a base, maybe a bit of transparent oxide red. I've got a little bit of warm color, a little bit of cool color. I've got cadmium orange, I've got cadmium red. And uh, I've got ultramarine blue and I've got a manganese blue as well. So I've got a, you know, warmer blues. Um, I'm thinking whatever I do, I'm, I'm sort of the only thought that I might have is that uh, I'd like to have warmer shadows and cooler light. Uh, that's all I'm thinking right now. So I'm, I'm curious to see how this goes. Nice to see you, Moni. Uh, Terra Nova. Hi. Welcome. Uh, welcome, everyone. And thanks for showing up. And again, before I get into this, um, I want to thank all of you for um, tuning in uh, and, um, uh, you know, looking at my work and, and showing interest and encouraging me. I do really appreciate uh, that you, you're taking time to actually watch this live. You can watch it anytime you want to later. And if you want to pass the link on to your friends or people who you think might be interested, if it's worth a thumbs up, I always appreciate the thumbs up. And I do appreciate comments too, either during or, or after this program. So it's free um, and I'm, I'm, I paint this way uh, all, you know, all the time when I just, when I say I paint this way all the time, um, I like to paint. And so I like to, you know, share what I'm doing while I'm painting um, because I think, um, well, I sort of like looking over other artists' shoulders too. So. Uh, if you are enjoying this, if you, if you like looking over my shoulder, then I'm, I'm really happy that you're here. And if you, again, think someone else might be interested, I'm happy if you share this uh, with others. Um, the uh, subscriptions have gone up some more. We're getting closer to the 500 subscription point where um, somebody's going to end up with a painting or a piece of art of some kind. Uh, it's going to be a giveaway. <clears throat> and uh, we'll see when we get there what that looks like. Um, so let's um, let's get started. I'm going to um, uh, hopefully my technology will hold today. Like I say, it's a new um, uh, internet system uh, that I have here in a different location, and um, I'm hoping that, that that things will go smoothly. If you lose me, I'll come back to you. Um, it takes me a minute or two to get back to you, but hopefully it will hold today. So nothing nice to see you. Thanks for uh, joining. Really super to see you guys. Thanks. Okay, I'm just going to go now to uh, this is actually a, uh, a panel that I prepared with um, an oil uh, based gesso. So this is dried for some time, I think probably three or four weeks. It's very dry, it's very smooth. And I'm going to use a combination of linseed oil and um, uh, a thinner, which I, which I use just a paint thinner. Um, it's like, you know, turpentine or chaise oil or whatever you want to call it. 
And I'm just going to put stuff down and, and just see what happens. And I'm going, I'm, I'm going to attempt to make something maybe figurative out of this. Maybe it'll be an abstract. Again, I'm really not committed to a specific image. So I'll get a big brush here. And I'm just going to get a little bit of this oil here, this thinner. And I'm going to grab a little bit of that rublev, which is kind of a warmer color. I'm just going to put it down. I'm, I'm just going to let this do its thing. And I'm, I'm using brush a brush. I'm not, you know, using any other tool at this stage. Um, just want to cover this with something. I could, I could put this on with rag. And as I mentioned before, you know, I could use a, a, a piece of plastic and, and you know, maybe I'll grab some paper towel or something and just put that over top. Uh, I like when, when the paint runs down a little bit, so I'm just going to just put a little bit of, of thinner into this and let it drip a little. And I'm just going to play here. That's all I'm going to do. Just putting paint down. I don't see anything in this yet at all. So, you know, this is, this is actually kind of fun because in a sense it's pure abstraction because there's really nothing that's recognizable. It's just brushwork. Um, just let your brush do the talking. And I'm using one color. Um, I could use more than one color. I've done that before in the past and just, you know, tried to sort of get a, oh, sorry about that. Just tried to get something going that might uh, give me a hint of something that I might want to paint. Um, again, I'm going to let that paint run down a little bit more. All I'm doing is going into the thinner and linseed here and just putting paint down. Just doing this, you know, this is a fun thing. When uh, Stefan and I, we talked about how do you get going um, and how do you get started and what inspires you. And you know how do you how do you create any kind of consistency in your work? Um, how do you get excited about starting to paint? Well, for me, this gets me excited about painting because as soon as you pick up a brush and start to make some marks, um, you start to see things, and and it's sort of like sitting down to a piano. If any of you are musicians, or maybe you play a different instrument, but when I sit down to a piano, I like to just sort of you know, sit down, play a few notes, and then just kind of let it flow. You know, I don't know what I'm going to play. I don't have a clue. Um, but that turns into a few chords, and I try a few different things. And for me, uh, painting is kind of the same thing. It's, there are times when, of course, as an illustrator, I had to really plan a lot. I had to really work hard to plan things. Um, and, um, you know, work it all out ahead of time, uh, get my colors right, make sure that it fit a certain space and so on and so forth. Um, so this is a, completely the opposite. And, um, you know, it's just, it's funny because we, we see different things when we, when we look at abstraction. We try to organize ourselves. Uh, we try, our brain tries to organize what we're looking at. Uh, thanks, Jeanette. I'm glad the stream is working fine. On Anne. Uh, great, you see a million things already. I should have you here with me so you could actually paint on top of this and show me a few of those million things. Stefan, thanks for joining. This is great, all the way from Hanover. Um, and this is, uh, I know uh, Stefan's off on his own adventure today, so this is exciting. In a beer garden and, and drinking to my health, and uh, here I am in Toronto. So, um, you know, since you're drinking to my health, then I'll be healthy. I'm going to try and do a good job of this. Um, thanks for showing up. All right. So I still don't see anything in this. Um, I'm not, and again, I'm not really looking for anything. I'm just letting the brush do its thing, just letting this paint drip. Um, hmm. I have no idea what I'm going to paint. Still, I don't have an idea. Now, if I was Brian, my friend Brian, I would just look at this for a day or two, but of course, we're not going to stick around that long. Um, and you're not going to, for sure. Um, I'm just going to start uh, trying to put something in here. I'm Actually, I think what I'm going to do is create a, a couple more values, get some darker values going. 
and maybe throw in a tiny touch of uh, transparent oxide red just to get a little more color going and just get some darks. So this is a combination of the rublev and transparent oxide red and I'm just going to throw some stuff in here. I have no, again, I have, don't have a clue. I don't know what I'm going to paint. Um, I'm liking what I see here already because it's it's nothing and somehow or other it's something as well. So <laughs> it's really fun. Um, Andrew saw a couple of angry people in conflict. That's, uh, that's interesting. Um, and it could be. Um, I really don't know still. Now, one of the things that I'll do sometimes is, like, I'll just squint at it. I'm also going to try something here. This is kind of like what Brian would do, except he would do it with a plastic bag. I'm just going to take some paper towel, and I'm just going to place it on top and pull out some textures. Um, just move it around and... Ah, maybe I just saw something. Okay, now that's weird because my brain, our brains want to organize things. So I'm going to go with something that, I, again, this can change dramatically. It can change completely. Um, but I'm going to try and pull some paint around and just see if I can make more out of something that I'm looking at right here. Um, okay. I'm going to bring in some, some darker accents, um, and, and let's just see if this evolves into something that we can make sense of. And I want to do this in a loose way. I don't want to commit myself to too much right here. Um, and I'm not going to tell you what it is. Because you're going to see different things than I do as I go. It's funny because it's already changing for me. I'm looking at it. And I'm seeing just with a few brush strokes here. Things that, that are starting to pull together. Again, I don't want to get too committed to this. So I don't want to sort of say, okay, like, you know, now this is what it's going to be. I want to keep it loose. Uh, I'm going to bring in a touch of blue. I want to get a darker background going. I want what's happening here to come out of a darker background. So let's see what happens when I do this. Sometimes these kind of paintings, you know, I'm not encouraging this, by the way. Um, but sometimes when you've had, you know, a couple of glasses of wine, um, you, you relax and you see things that maybe you might not if you hadn't had some wine. So I used to do that more regularly. Um, I'm not drinking anything but Diet Coke today. So, um, maybe it'll end up being less exciting, but I'm going to try and do a sober image here that is still exciting if possible. Okay. And you're probably seeing things in this already that I don't, of course. And again, half the fun is sort of just the, the mystery of what this might be. And, okay, now you're seeing horses galloping around. That's fun. I really like that. I, you know, that's the fun thing about abstraction. Um, we, we, we really have this need. It's, it's almost like a primal need or a protection uh, that we have built into us to try to organize things into recognizable forms. Because when we do that, um, we know whether we're safe or not. So this is sort of an, an instinct that we have. Okay. And if you don't see anything in this, this is okay too.
Um, sometimes when I watch Stefan paint, it, I look at, at it and wonder, what the, you know, what the hell is he doing? Um, um, and then suddenly there's this kind of aha moment where I get it. Now, if you're, you're painting from a model or if you have someone in front of you and there's, you know, we can organize those things easier. But when you're working from your imagination, as I am, I don't have anything to direct me here, really. Um, but I do, I am seeing something here that's starting to kind of come together. I'll find, we'll find out. Maybe you'll start to see it soon, too. This is going to start to become obvious in a moment. Okay. I've got the, the basics of, of what I'm looking to do now. Okay, this is, this is starting to get interesting, I think. Um, I'm going to start to bring in a little bit of um, thinner and start to pull some of the color away in areas. All right, let's see what happens now. It's not very obvious yet. This next stage may make it more obvious. Again, I want to keep this really loose. I'm going to do something else here. I'm going to take a, 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 a smooth brush. It's Jim Morrison. <laughs> I'd like that in. It could be. Um, okay, so I'm going to take a smooth brush, and I want to, um, I want to just kind of drag my brush through everything here just to smooth it out and see what happens here. Uh, what this does is it sort of pulls things into the peripheral. Like we get this sense of peripheral view. We see things this way, by the way. Um, we we see these things out of the you know the side of our eyes, out of the corner of our eyes, uh, where things are in focus and some things are not. Um, and we organize shapes this way. As soon as I do that, it creates other values, which we're e it's easier to organize these secondary and tertiary values. Um, and now um, you're probably starting to see this. And if you're not, well, that's okay too. Aha, you see recumbent face. Excellent, that's great, Veronica. Um, I'm seeing it too. Um, and I'm gonna build on this a little more. Um, I'm gonna go into this Again, with I want to create a little bit of warmth in the shadows. It'll be a little cooler in the light. I'm even going to bring the tiniest touch of cadmium red into the shadow areas just for fun. Um, and I'm I'm seeing you know I didn't start out wanting to necessarily make a face, but I'm seeing something here that might. And by the way, this doesn't necessarily, it does not necessarily rely on your drawing ability. Um, so that's the other kind of cool thing about painting this way. You don't have to be able to draw really well to be able to do this because you can keep moving the paint around, pushing it around until it's in the right place. And, you know, the right place is where you leave it, you know, you, where you choose to leave it. And maybe you don't want to take it very far. Like maybe, um, you know, you just want to leave it obscure. Um, that's okay. It's quite okay. Um, in the beginning, on the Samnath, yes, it's true. Um, you, uh, it's, it, it starts with so many possibilities. And even at this stage can be still so many possibilities. I, I'm not completely committed to this, but co committed enough that I'm starting to see where this might turn into something like a face, like if I had ears over here, for example. 
And I don't want to get too much into drawing this. I don't want, like I say, I don't want to get too committed to this. I just want to play. I want to move the paint around. Um, I just want to keep the textures interesting. Um, uh, this could be anything or anyone still, um, but I am seeing kind of a, a man's face maybe here. Um, maybe, you know, I want to get, I want to get more attitude here. And I, I have no reference. I'm not working from any reference at all. And that's kind of exciting because when you don't, um, it still retains kind of a dreamlike quality. Um, I, I do like the idea of painting being kind of dreamlike in a sense. We, one of the things that we try to do uh, a lot is, is, you know, develop skills so that we can make something look real and believable and, and it looks like something or someone. You know, we work hard at that. Uh, we, we don't work as hard at making things abstract or, or less recognizable because we, you know, when, when we're young and we're first starting out, we really want to make things look recognizable because we get applause for that. You know, people say, oh, that's really great. It looks just like that person or that thing that you're trying to paint. Um, and, and that's all fine uh, when we're younger because, you know what, that's, we're, we're trying to fit in, right? Um, we're trying to, to improve our skills also. Um, but I think one of the things that happens, it, it's just my feeling, but it, when you mature as an artist, um, maybe you're more interested in, in exploring and just trying different things to see you know, what you can do, what you can get away with, what, what's important, what's not important. Um, you know, what do, I, what do I, what can I do to, to play and have fun and not be so concerned about what other people are thinking about what I'm doing? Um, and yes, of course, I would like to please you. Of course, I'd like to, um, you know, show you something and have you go, oh, wow, that's really, that's really interesting. That's really neat. I wish I could do that. I mean, all that stuff, that's the stuff I feel about other people. Um, but I, I want to try and do something my way. I want to build something my way and just see where it goes. And, and so it, it's, it's fun when you do this for yourself. It really is because you're, it forces you to just uh, be less concerned about um, what others are thinking about the work and, and just playing with, with what you have in front of you. Okay. Um, now I want to take this into deeper shadow and behind. I'm going to go further into the, the depths behind so that this, um, I'm seeing a face here and I, I, I want to see this kind of coming, looming out of something that's darker. Um, so it's a bit mysterious. And just because I want to, just because it's fun to try, I'm going to bring in another color to create an edge that might be more interesting here. I'm bringing in a little bit of ultramarine blue. I just want to start to to add some color to this um, and maybe a bit of warmth on the other side over here. And just let this thing evolve. Um, one of the things that's fun sometimes, if you like to draw, if, if you enjoy sketching, is just to take a pen and start scribbling with a pen on a page and see if you can find forms in, in your scribbles. Uh, because that's also really interesting. Um, again, we, we, we really want to organize things, to make sense of things. So... Yeah, there could be, it could be dappled light under a tree too. Like it really could be so many things, even still, 
um, at this stage. I'm going to go over it again with a soft brush uh, and just see what comes out of this. This soft brush thing uh, tends to define or refine things a little more. I'm just dragging things. You can do this with a palette knife or you can do this with soft cloth or whatever you want. Um, and it doesn't have to be horizontal. It can be vertical. You know, there's no rules here. There's, there's absolutely no rules whatsoever. This is just one of the ways that I like to play. Um, now I can use the same soft brush that I have and just pull color away and go over that softly again. That's the nice thing about oil paint and the particular surface that I'm working on is very smooth. So the oil paint comes away very nicely. I don't have it. I forgot to bring my Q-tips with me, so I'm, I can't even use those. So I can't get too refined or too defined this way. Um, I'm just playing here. And you can move the dark color around. Of course, every time I do this with a smooth brush, it also takes the paint away. So this is a clean brush. It's not, I don't have any paint on this already. And again, I'm just going to go over this. I can go horizontally if I want to, I can go vertically. You can start to see some of the textures that are happening. Um, as a result of the canvas that this was painted over. Um, that's kind of nice too, kind of like that. <laughs> the Rembrandt portrait, wouldn't that be great? I admire Rembrandt very much. The Chinese landscape, like that too. I love that you're seeing all these different things in this. That's, that's really fun for me. It makes me want to actually push this in other directions. I'm going to bring some darks through here. The great mystery painting. <laughs> I don't know why I want to bring darks through there. It just feels right. And maybe down in here too. And some of you may be thinking, what the hell is this guy doing? You know, we're watching him just make a big mess on a canvas. Well, I guess I'm trying to encourage you to do that. Um, why not? Uh, play with the paint. What will it do for you? What can you make it do? Okay, I'm going to soften that down again. If you're, uh, if you're drinking beer, Stefan, uh, maybe this is already making sense to you. Now it's gone from like a man's face to a woman's face kind of here um, for me. Um, let's see where this goes. I'm going to start to bring in a little more definition where I, I see things more clearly. I can't tell you how much fun this is to paint this way. Um, it's, again, because I'm, I'm really not trying to make anything perfect. 
uh, what is perfect anyhow? I mean, that's a whole discussion, right? But I'm really not trying to make anything beautiful or, or pretty or... Okay, I'm coming back to you again. My phone kicked out, so there we go. I'm still struggling with this technology. I'm hoping you can still hear me. Um, bear with me, I'm very sorry. I'll start this in again. I'm going to try something also. Opening up the door. Uh, mic working. Okay. Uh, it looks like my mic is working either. I'm hoping you can still hear me. Um, audio. Testing. Okay. I'm actually going to pull this right out of my phone and I'm hoping you can hear me. Are you able to hear me now? Okay, I'm, I'm back again. I'm hoping you can you hear me now. All right, let's just do this. Uh, hoping you can hear me now. Again, very sorry about this. This is just brutal when this happens. Um, I thought I thought that you know this. I was I was going to have this solved today, but apparently not. So here we are. Um, it's another issue, apparently. I have a brand new internet service, and it was very steady before, but it doesn't like when I've signed in as a guest to myself. I have a feeling that's the issue. So, there we go. It's a little disconcerting, but of course that gave me a little chance to rest and get away from it uh, again and see what, see what I'm doing here a little better. Uh, that's the other thing I can recommend. Um, uh, get away from your work, you know, uh, stand across the room, get, get well away from it. And you'll see things in it better if you do that. Um, right now I'm looking at this and I'm seeing that if I'm going to make a face, I want to create a little more, if that, I think that's what I'm doing here in the end. Um, I want to create a little more distance between the eyes and I want to get these shapes a little bit more like, well, face-like, shall we say. Okay. So sorry about the uh, technology. Um, seems like the safest way to do this is not plug any mics in, but just to have it come off my phone. And... I'm learning. You can see how quickly just a few brush strokes in certain directions change the whole feeling of something. Again, a combination of the soft brush and a harder brush. I keep moving this around hoping that I can get a little more definition, a little more proportion going. It seems very bizarre to be doing this. I've got these really strange clown faces happening right now, um, but I kind of like it. Um, let suggestion work for you. So, you know, the tendency sometimes is to overanalyze and, and overthink something and say, well, you know, this has got to be like this. Well, at this stage, nothing is, is sort of 
rock solid. Um, that can happen uh, down the road if you want it to, um, or, or not. Um, at any point in time, you get to choose uh, what you want and don't want. Like there are areas that are confusing here to me. Um, so I'm just going to, you know, change it around. Um, make, make some new shapes. See what happens. Uh, if you have very good drawing skills, by the way, um, it's very difficult to keep this up. Um, there are some artists I know who they just simply get in and they'll draw something beautifully out of their head. And I think it's wonderful when they can do that. But it can also inhibit you because um, after a while you end up doing the same thing all the time because you know how to do it. Um, so especially when you're working from your imagination, when you're working from your imagination, uh, you want to allow the dream to continue. You know, just let it happen. Uh, this could turn into something really horrific. It could be, it could end up being some kind of monster creature or maybe n not even a person, not even a creature, you know, not even a human. Um, so uh, just leave it open to possibilities. When I say that now, I kind of want to take it into something that's a little less human-like. So I'm going to see what happens when I do this now. Now, if you've all run away, that's okay. I, this, is, this can be just sort of a, a very strange process. It's not meant to be um, mid Midsummer Night's Dream. Oh, yeah, cool. I like that. Um, that's fun. Um, it could be a masked person. Um, there's some kind of eye thing going here. There's maybe a lion-like thing happening. I really don't know. And like I say, but like I said early on, I have no idea what this is going to be. I just simply don't know. I'm letting it evolve. I'm letting, I'm just playing with this right now. Um, I want to do that. I want to enjoy this process. Just have the fun of, of letting it be something that maybe is horrifying or, you know, maybe it's beautiful. I mean, I really don't want to get hooked on something very specific at this stage. They say a picture is, is worth a thousand words. Well, sometimes a paintbrush is like a thousand faces or a thousand subjects, you know? Just keep moving it around. I haven't gotten into too many colors here. I'm just working monochromatically, um, which I think is a fun way to start this process because it's easier to see things, if the values are correct, if the values are working, um, then you can start to build color in when you, you feel more confident about where you're going. Right now, I'm not confident about where I'm going. I'm just trying to get something happening. Just playing. And I don't want to lock into it too quickly, so. Carl, welcome. Nice to see you here. Thanks for showing. You can see a second face in the background. That's neat, too. Sometimes the best stuff happens in the backgrounds. So I'm going to drag my brush through this again. One of the things when I'm working this way, you know, I've got the phone between me and this uh, board. And uh, I'm, I'm close to it. So that can be a little bit of a problem. Like I say, when you're, when you're working on your paintings, try and get back 
get away from it, get across the room. Or the other thing that's handy is to take a photo of it sometimes with your phone. Look at it very small and, and see what comes out of that. Because um, we organize things a little better that way and we see things a little better that way. You know, when we're looking at something, the first thing that we look at are the larger shapes. And I've talked about that in past uh, live streams. We look at the larger shapes first. It helps us to identify very quickly whether it's some, someone or something that we recognize. We can't look at them in detail up close right away because they're not close, you know. So the things that we see in our peripheral, the things that are further from us, are the things that we try to identify um, fairly quickly. If it's something frightening or something dangerous, then we may be more alert uh, to what's going on. Um, and we might need to sort of say, well, look out, you know, now, um, now you, you, you know, you better take care, you better pay attention to this. And then when we get closer, we see the details more. So one of the advantages of, of getting back from your, your subject, something uh, from a distance, if you get back from it, then uh, you're able to see the larger picture and you can start to take that larger picture and define it better as you go, as you move in on it. So it's like kind of taking a camera that's out of focus and pulling it into focus. Again, still playing with these darker colors. I haven't got a lot of color going here. Um, but I'm trying to get build values that are starting to have more of a sense of definition. Um, funny how we decide what is beautiful, what is frightening. Um, things that are a little unusual or, or asymmetrical tend to be less beautiful. A symmetry tends to create more beauty, according to, you know, studies that have been done. Um, uh, so, you know, where do, where do we go with this? Do we want it to be beautiful? Do we want it to be frightening? You know, this is, these are our choices at this stage. Now I'm seeing more of an angle on this, which I kind of like coming down this way. That's kind of nice. I'm going to start to accent that a little bit because I kind of like this angle here. Create a little more definition so I have a little more perspective on it. It's funny because when I first started this, I felt like I was looking up on it. And um, now I sort of feel like I'm looking down on this subject. So I want to accent that a little bit more. Curious to see what that might look like. You now sometimes you have a dream and in, you know, you have a, quite a vivid dream. Things are very clear. Uh, and when you wake up and you think about what you've seen, it doesn't make any sense at all. Like it, it, it was very vivid and within the dream state, it made perfect sense. You could feel it. You could sense your presence there. Um, and I find this process is kind of like that. You get a sense of what, what's there. Um, you can feel it, but without the detail. And uh, of course, in the dreams, depending what they are, sometimes I've had like flying dreams or floating dreams, and I realize there's just no way that that could have happened. I couldn't, you know, I don't know how it is for you when you, if you've ever had flying dreams, mine are sort of strange because I feel like I'm in water and um, I'm kicking my feet to get, you know, to the top of the water. And uh, I can really feel the water and all of that. Maybe it's just the sheets wrapped around my legs. But um, I can really feel like I'm there and it look, feels so believable. And yet later on I realized, well, you know, actually, um, I, I wasn't in water. I was 
you know, I was flying because I was looking down on, on the earth somehow or other from the sky. And so um, this process of painting allows you to, to kind of dream, if that makes any sense. You can really make this what you want it to be and just pull as much definition or take as much definition out as you want to also. There's just no rules with this. Um, you're watching a modem telephone, my first modem. Oh, I can give a thumbs up, that's cool. Um, yeah, Lee, it's really important to keep our, uh, our uh, intuition alive. It really is important. Now it's starting to feel a little bit more like where I might want to take this. Okay. I'm starting to see some, some things, some shapes that I like. I'm just going to start to accent a few things here. I'm going to bring in another uh, dry brush and pull out some of the paint that I see here and get some accents working. Get a sense of light. and shadow. Again, working with, I'm on a very smooth surface. This paint's on a very smooth surface, so I can really pull the paint away again. Uh, and I, I love that process. You can really start to see this taking shape now. I feel more committed to this now. I feel like, okay, I, this is something that, that might be interesting. Um, you know, whenever I, I do these things, um, if it's a face in particular, which this happens to be right now, um, even though it could change, um, I always feel like I'm doing a portrait of someone. I don't know who they are, um, but they look like someone. Um, someone in the world might actually look this way. Proportions are a little wacky here, but I don't really care. I, not yet. I may want to refine it a little more. Um, so, like so. And again, with the dry brush, you know, this is sort of, for me, it's kind of like working with charcoal. Uh, charcoal is really fun to work with because it, it, it pretends to be a lot of things before you're really committed to it. It's very forgiving. make this side disappear a little more. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to take that more into shadow over here. And again with a very smooth brush, with a drier brush, I'm just going to go over that and just drop those things back. The more you soften things down in different directions, uh, this way, when you're working this way with paint, of course, the darker it goes, unless you're really pressing into the, the brush, in which case it actually takes the paint away again. Okay. Um, and another little thing, and I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this in past uh, live streams. Texture is the property of light. So we see more texture in light than we do in shadow. So in the shadow areas you can afford to be smoother. In the light areas you can you can you can allow yourself to have more texture. It's just a general principle. If you look at uh, some of Rembrandt's work, you know, you really see that. Like he really got a lot of texture going 
in the shadow areas, uh, sorry, in the light areas, and left the, the shadow areas sort of not defined very well. We don't see into the dark so much. So um, you can really get away with a lot of suggestion in the shadow. If you look at his painting, The Night Watch, there's a lot of suggestion in it in the shadow areas and a lot more information in the light. Of course, he was commissioned to do you know, portraits of various individuals, they had to look like the various people. And, you, you know, we see things in the light. We don't see things so much in the shadow. So you can do a lot of suggestive things in the shadow areas. Okay, now I want to start to bring a little bit, of, a little more color into this. Just cleaning a brush up here. Um, I'm using a, a Princeton Aspen brush. It's a number six. And I'm sort of using that mostly through this painting so far, other than the big brush that I have, which is a soft, uh, it's a white uh, Taclon brush, which you can use for watercolor or oil. And the the other brush, I have no idea, Premier, that's probably really old. I don't even know where I got it from. Um, I'm going to try and bring a little, not just a little bit, but a fair bit of color down some edges here because I want to create a little more excitement. So I'm going to do that on the edge of where the light drops into the shadows. Now this is something that happens, by the way, when you are, um, I need to put a little more of this red out here. Uh, when you are um, uh, painting, I think I didn't leave my cad red out here. So you know what, I got some orange and I also have some lizard. I'm just gonna mix those two. That'll give me something that'll work. Um, so when you are looking at something in color, you'll notice that the areas just before the, the color turns into the shadow, that it intensifies. Color intensifies um, just as it's turning into the shadow areas. And you can afford to have some fairly intense colors in those areas, generally. Now they may be a little too light when I look at it. Um, we'll just see what happens. I'm going to go over those again with a very smooth brush. A <laughs> self-portrait of myself. I think I look worse than that. Um, I know a lot of people th th uh, say that they tend in their imagination to paint themselves, uh, the, a likeness of themselves. Maybe we do that because we see so much of ourselves. Don't know. Just soften all of that down. And now I, I want to start getting into some light areas. How long my time? Okay. Uh, not too bad. All right. Um, okay, now I want to take this uh, into a little more uh, color in the light. I'm going to use um, I'm going to use the same red that I have, but I'm going to bring some white into it. So it's going to be kind of pink. I'll even bring in a tiny touch of yellow. Um, and this could actually go south in a hurry if I don't, if this goes, you know, the wrong way, um, it can happen in a hurry. When I say it goes south, for those of you who don't know that expression, those of you who do, um, it means it could turn out really bad. So I'm just going to see what happens here. I'm going to start to bring in some other 
colors may be kind of flesh colors. The color underneath is picking up a little bit through this. So, um, and I f actually find that it's too colorful. There's too much pink. I want to go more towards the yellow in this. Again, I'm keeping it loose. I don't, I don't want to get too hung up on getting loads of detail going here. I want to just really keep this loose and fresh. Maybe there's a touch more color in the cheek area here. Um, maybe there's a, a shot of red over near the ear. You know, wherever the um, ears tend to be very warm in color. This person looks a little demonic somehow. Okay. Just trying to, you know, get the big planes kind of working here. Get a sense of light and shadow. There'd be more light up top. Uh, so I'm going to bring a little more light into these areas up top and I can always go back in and soften things smooth things down if I need to you know this part of the nose may pick up a little light here maybe the edge of the nose here and again I'm just guessing at this stuff I, I like I really don't know if it doesn't look right I just paint over it paint it out Trying to imagine the planes a little bit here, you know, the, the upper lip comes out, and the lower lip is going to have a touch more color in it. Let's just do that. Um, going back into slightly darker values as I go further away from the light areas up here. I'm trying to think about what it might do. And again, these are technical things to a point, but you know, painting is really about just trying to make it look right. Um, if it looks right, well, that's fine. It doesn't matter how you get there. Um, all the technical stuff in the world doesn't necessarily make you a good painter. Like you can know all this stuff, but for me, I think the emotion is something that has to carry through a good painting. Um, it has to feel like there's some excitement in it that, you know, the artist actually enjoyed the process. It's not just a technical exercise. It's about trying to get a feeling across. And, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And it's okay if it doesn't, because you're, you're learning. Every time you do a painting, you're learning. So this person's going a little grayer the more I mess around with a color that's underneath coming through, it's like kind of like a wet and wet technique. <clears throat> now I'm gonna just go over that again, very softly with this big brush and just smooth things out, pull things together. Um, it, it leaves suggestions. That's what this does. It, it smooths things out, it makes it feel more cohesive somehow um, and you know I there are a lot of artists that sort of do this dragging technique I like it um, because very quickly it gives it a finish um, but you can get too fancy with it too you know where it just becomes a crutch um, so you know use it to the point where you feel comfortable and go back into it where you want to some of these lights I'm picking up with my brush are making their way into the background a little. And I'm kind of starting to like what's happening here. This is a very thin application of paint right, right now. I'm not getting super thick into this. You can take paint away with that dry brush. You can pull the paint around. There's no 
Again, no rules here. Just playing. That's all we're doing. It's okay if things kind of get textured and, you know, break up a little. Let the viewer get involved in it. You don't have to explain everything all the time. I know I go on about that a lot, but you don't have to explain everything. Now I'm just brushing in different directions here. I want a little more mystery in this. I don't want it to be, you know, so worked out that there aren't areas left up to chance. So I'm gonna pull a little bit. I wanna bring a couple more highlights in. I kinda of like this one up here. I wanna accent that a little more. In the process of creating, you destroy. That's just one of the things that happens. So sometimes you'll, you'll put something in, you really like it. If you're really smart, sometimes you just leave it alone. Um, that's a good thing if you can. Um, but very often, like I find, I just want to take it a little further. And sometimes I ruin the good stuff, you know? Um, we have to ruin a lot of good stuff before we get to the point where we say, okay, you know, I can leave that alone. That's that's fine. I, I don't mind that. Um, just leave it alone. It, it also takes some courage to, to leave things alone because we really have this tendency to want to resolve everything. And in resolving everything, we take all the magic out, or we take a lot of the magic out, I think, of, of what a painting can be. So I, now, now I want to get into a little more of the background and I really want to pull, uh, have this, this uh, face coming out of a darker shape, makes it a little more dramatic. You don't always have to go to really light lights and you don't have to go to really dark darks, but um, you, know, you want to have sort of value relationships that are working through a painting. So I'm going to try and bring in some richer dark areas in behind. I need to bring a little bit of medium into this. This is the brush that I was using that was dry all along. So now um, I've got some more medium in this. It should go down nice and thick and dark. Again, the medium is just linseed oil with a bit of paint thinner. I want to make some areas disappear in here. Just want to make all of this draw back. Sometimes these kind of things happen. Those brush strokes are kind of fun, you know? Like you don't have to resolve it always, leaving the stuff that it's working for the painting. Sometimes the brush leaves little bits that come out of, out of your brush. It's okay. That's all part of the accidental, which makes something more exciting, more interesting. I want to get more contrast in a couple of areas here. A little more definition, but I don't want to get crazy with the definition. I have no idea who this is, but it doesn't matter.
this person has gone through a few different age changes, I would say. So this is a fun thing that's happening here. It's kind of lifting the paint and putting it down at the same time. Just so happens, learning something as I do this. I'm going to grab another smooth brush and just smooth a few things out a little more here um, and get some directions. I've got directions going all over the place here. Sometimes it's nice just to go through the whole thing. Well, I'm going to do that. What the hell? Why not? I'm going to go through the whole thing now with a wider brush and um, just drag it right over the whole thing and let's just see what happens with this this is risky of course you know I don't know what's going to happen but if you don't risk you don't learn so just going to go over the whole thing and you can see I'm dragging it enough that this board is actually moving and I'm picking up paint just one color is dragging into another And it creates a sense of an action that's happening here. Now, when I go back into this another direction, um, that'll smooth this out a little more. And everything goes a little grayer, a little less color, a little less, you know, intensity when you do this. Okay. It's a very soft brush that I'm using here, this big one again, just putting in a few little accents at this stage. Again, I want that background to be dark and behind here. But maybe I want to get a sense of this light that's coming in from the left side. So I want to create a, a little more light through here. Again, I'm really pushing into this paint now, moving it around. You see how much lighter that went against the grays. That's okay. I, I'm not not so stuck on something that has to be absolutely smooth. You know, it's okay to bring texture back in. It's funny. Um, sometimes I look at these things and I think, you know, oh no, like uh, it was so smooth and it was so worked out and so fine before. And now look what I've done. Um, the thing is that you can always go back in and smooth things down again if you want to. I just really want to get a feeling going here. Um, more than anything, I kind of like to turn this into something even a little bit more dramatic. I want to try. Uh, this is something I'm going to try. If it doesn't work, well, it doesn't work. I don't care. Um, this is just we're having fun here. I'm going to bring in a little bit of this uh, of this medium and just let it run down and let's see what happens here. I 
that's gone right back to the uh, original board underneath. Now, now I'm just like picking up a couple of light areas, letting this face melt a little. I kind of like the way it's melting. The best part about painting this way is if you really don't like what you've done, you haven't wasted anything except a little time, and it's never really wasted because you're learning. Um, but you, I could take this right off the board again if I wanted to. Um, it's just paint, right? And I want to throw a little color into this area here now. So it becomes more water-like somehow. And I can go back and smooth areas where I need to. It's okay. And because I've done that on the face, I can do that in the background too. There's no rules here. And bring in a little bit of medium, get some of those drips happening in behind. This is really fun, by the way. This is like, for me, this is some of the most exciting stuff because it isn't predictable. It's not, you know, it's just play. That's all it is. And it isn't predictable. And sometimes, some magic happens in an image. It just kind of comes out and it works. And other times it doesn't at all. So I can't stress how important it is to play, just to let it go. And there will be stages in this. You know, when you, if you're watching this again or if you have the time um, or you want to zoom through it quickly, There'd be stages in this that you probably would like better, you know, that, that may have been the point that I could have stopped or maybe should have stopped. But that's not the exercise. The exercise is not necessarily to make a beautiful painting. The exercise is to play and, and get this stuff going so that you know how to make your paint do things later. Um, you can have some control over it. This is still very controllable at this stage, if, if you want it to be. You know, I can go into all of this stuff that I've done back here, and again, with just a soft brush, take a lot of that texture out. Like, I'm just going to use this big brush again. Just take that texture out. Um, let it drip down. Try it. See if you like it. If you don't, you can just go back into it and pull your textures back up through it. Um, the concern is always, well, I end up with like a mucky mess. Well, um, out of the mucky mess, you can create softer edges. You can, you can pull things together again. So um, I can take this big brush here that I've got. There's a bit of, got a little bit too much medium in it. <clears throat> just going to clean that medium out, make sure it's dry, and just go back into this. Again, soften it off. Maybe those highlights are too much. Maybe they're not. Maybe I've got, maybe I can use some of the things that I see here to create something a little crazy. You know, maybe this is a, a crazy creature now. No longer that thing that we recognize so much. I did like that red ear, though, when it was happening before. So I'm going to put some of that back in, for sure. Let's, let's see what happens. Maybe this time it'll be an orange ear. Maybe pick up on that a little bit. I'm doing this without alcohol, so 
um, it's kind of scary what happens when you start adding that into the mix. It's really getting insane. Um, and yes, you can. You can put a bit of linseed on your uh, your your canvas in the beginning, and move that around. And uh, it's a nice way to move color around to get some control. I'm gonna bring that orange. I'd started out with the idea of cool light and warm shadow. Now I've got warm light and cooler shadow, so that's okay. You can change it any time when you work like this. I'm going to get more into the flesh tones again. As soon as you add white to a color, it does cool it. So if I want to keep it warm, I have to make sure I add more chrome, chroma into it. So more color into it. And you can see it gets mucky and gray. The more you do this, the grayer it all gets. But that doesn't mean that you can't put color back into it again later. That's like turned into some kind of hairy monster here. Probably have a few of you saying, what, what the heck is going on with this guy? What's the point? The point is to play, to have fun. Learn while you're playing. Don't get fixed on one idea. Let your ideas evolve. Push the paint around. You can use your finger also sometimes just to get a little bit more detail where you want it. Now it's turning into some kind of creepy looking, I don't know what, I have no idea what this is. We go back into the flesh area and bring more of a sense of flesh tone into this. Sort of like starting a golf game, this. If any of you play golf, you start out, you've got the first two or three holes and you've got a good score going. And then it kind of all falls apart. The best part about this is that um, it's just paint and you can leave it or you can take it away. It doesn't really matter. Um, with the golf game, you, your score is your score at the end. If you don't like the thing that you've painted, then you can always just paint over it later. We've got blue eyebrows now. That's fun. Well, I'm true to my word. I didn't promise anything spectacular today. The process is fun.
I'm looking at this on my screen and thinking, you know, I could like start all over again. We don't have the time uh, if I want to keep this going, but I could start all over again and just do this, take it right back to where it was before. Um, you know, there was something that was going there that was fun and interesting. I could take it right back to where it was before, or I can just keep going, see where it takes me. And I find the see where it takes me thing is very rewarding because it's not about trying to do a spectacular painting. It's about learning. So. Now I'm going to go back into these dark areas here and just redefine this. Go into the flesh areas again. I've got this gray flesh kind of color happening here. Smooth things down a bit, try and pull it together. Go into those intense colors on edges. We've got the ear back here. I'm going to bring that color down through the cheek, maybe through the nostril. And a few little accents. And I, I'm going to wrap this up soon, just if you're wondering. It's like creepy person. <laughs> I've got a friendly smile in all of these faces. Even my devilish creatures seem to be happy today. Take a little of the blue out of the eyebrows here. Maybe pick up a little highlight on this eyebrow over here. Maybe I should do the same on this one over here. And pick up a little bit of a reflected light back here. Maybe even over here. A little bit of color coming into the lower lip. And I'm going to introduce another color altogether here, just for the heck of it. So, Stefan's favorite color, manganese blue. Is building a little more form. All right. Maybe I need to pick a little bit of that color up on the beard. Over here. So we've got a little coming out this way.
Oh, this is really crazy, this painting. So, I think um, I'm going to call it there. This was, um, this was fun to do. I hope I'm going to, I'll come back to you here. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. That was just like really crazy and kind of fun. And like I said, I had no idea what I was going to paint. Um, that went through a few changes. Some of the faces were interesting. Some of them were really strange and unusual. Um, and um, I really, uh, I had fun. I, you know, if you stayed with me, uh, thank you for your patience. Um, now and then I may just do one of these things again. That could turn into anything. Like really it could. Um, I don't know. I just somehow or other tend to see faces in things. Um, but some people saw you know, horses, and some people saw, you know, famous singers they recognized, and so on. Um, uh, you never know what you're going to see. And so, so the fun thing about doing this is that you can, you can leave it at any stage when you think you see something that, you know, is, you want to keep because it has a resemblance of something that you like. That's where you leave it. Um, I could work on this you know, half a dozen times. I could go over this again. Um, and while the paint is wet, even in the next couple of days, I could do more with it, and maybe I will. Uh, but the, the, the exercise, the point of the exercise is that you, um, you keep moving the paint until you leave it where you like it. Um, and I didn't leave it. Uh, I, just, I just kept going. You can go as far as you want on this. You could spend like a week on these things and turn it into something that um, is very different from where you started. Um, dream, let that dream quality happen. Uh, let it happen from inside you, let it just come out. Be spontaneous. Um, uh, uh, go with intuition. So mm -hmm. your intuition says, you know, I want to put a shape here or there, just do it. Uh, Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. In lots of cases, it doesn't work. But because it's forgiving, because paint is forgiving, you can paint over it, you can move it until you're happy with it. So uh, there it is. Again, if you enjoyed this, thumbs up, pass it on to friends. Um, you know, say, I, you know, I watched this crazy process of this guy painting weird faces. Um, maybe some people will like it, I don't know. If you did, I'm happy, and if you didn't, well, it's okay. I'm hoping that, you know, maybe some of the other ones are, are interesting for you, too. So I had fun, hoping you did, too. Have a great uh, uh, weekend, and thanks again for tuning in. Um, stay safe, and happy painting. Take care. Bye-bye.